So what we're going to cover today is really just a couple of things. One is really how are you going to set your goals for 2022? How many leads do you need to hit uh, your target revenue? We're going to talk about the three fundamentals of marketing success on the internet. Um, we're going to talk about how to optimize your website for conversions in 2022 and beyond. And that's going to be really important because you can have all the SEO you want. You can have the Google ads and the Facebook ads, and you can generate as many leads as you want. But if people come to your website, they come to your landing page, your Google business profile, your social media, whatever it is that that target URL is you're sending them to, and they don't fill out a form, they don't pick up the phone and call you, they don't use some kind of messaging technology then what good is it? Um, so we're really going to talk and we're going to talk heavily about conversions in 2022. Additionally, uh, just so everybody knows, in January of 2022, we are going to be running our webinar on actually how to enhance your website for conversions. <clears throat> We're also going to talk about the big picture of all the online marketing channels um, that you should be tapping into. For example, SEO, pay-per-click, social media engagement, social media advertising, YouTube, even some of the newer things that are, that are coming out that are becoming really hot right now, you know, and, and how that affects the legal market. You know, for example, you know, there's a big push for um, video advertising on TikTok, on Instagram. And, you know, we're going to talk about how even the legal field can, can utilize these channels. We're going to also talk about kind of within that within that vein, what are the trending uh, factors that we're seeing at the end of 2021 going into 2022, and what are the factors that you really want to focus on in order to generate the leads that you need in 2022. And finally, we're going to work together. This is going to be a working session, and we're going to help develop some type of an action plan where you're ready to go. You you can you know you can take these steps, and then later on this afternoon, you can get started and get ready for 2022. We're only a couple of weeks away, you know. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to be you know sitting there on January 15th, you know, thinking, geez, I just wasted the last you know month or so. I got to get moving. We're going to do this right now, right today. So if you're ready, if you're excited for this, give me one in the chat just so I can see, you know, I want to have this somewhat engaging. All right. Well, I see uh, we're, getting, we're getting a few ones. Yes, absolutely ready. Can't wait to get started. All right. Well, fantastic. Let's get uh, moving on it then. So the first thing, the most important thing is why should you listen to me? There are a hundred thousand people in the world who can you know who consider themselves internet marketing experts there are thousands of people and agencies in the US there are hundreds of agencies that even consider themselves legal niche specialists so why listen to me who am i well, first of all, again, my name is attorney Michael Goldstein. I am the author of How to Be the Best Known Lawyer. And if you come to our website, legalmarketingstrategy.com, you can actually download a free copy of that. I am a licensed attorney in the state of Massachusetts, as well in the First Circuit Court. I've also practiced in the state of Maryland, as well as in the state of New Hampshire on a pro hoc vice basis. I've spoken at numerous bar events. Um, I'm talking about internet marketing. I have spoken at numerous bar events and have been invited to discuss metadata and how the internet actually can affect your overall litigation strategy even. We've, we've gone into e-discovery and, and things to that extent. And though this is not um, a webinar on how to leverage technology for your litigation practice, it is something that you, know, you want to be aware of that it, it's out there. I have published numerous articles um, about lawyer marketing, attorney marketing, um, bankruptcy, personal injury, promotions online. And those articles have been published on affiliates of the NBC, ABC, Fox, the CW, the WB, all sorts of major media outlets have picked us up um, and have deemed us worthy to share this with their audience. Um, and most importantly, you know, why am I someone who can actually teach you something? I've done this before. This isn't, you know, our first rodeo. Um, I spent years, as a matter of fact, teaching internet marketing, as well as web development um, and database um, optimization for websites at the college level uh, in, a, in a private school in Massachusetts, Merrimack College, they're in North Andover. And I've worked with lawyers across the United States, helping them optimize their websites. 
So the first question that we really want to ask is, you know, what's the hardest part about marketing your law firm online? And they, I mean, there's a lot of things that you want to consider. You know, there are so many ways that you can go. There's a lot of money that can be spent, whether it be with SEO, whether it be with Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube, engagement on Facebook, optimization for local versus national. There's so many different ways to go. There's so many different avenues. You could purchase Avo and find law ads. You can use email automation. You, you know, there, there is just so many different avenues, press release and content marketing. So it involves a major investment, quite frankly. And the legal field is a little unlike some of the other fields, you know, that you, that you see heavily in digital marketing, unlike, for example, you know, um, home services where you have handyman and you have um, electricians and, and you have, you know, window folks and people who they really aren't investing all that much. The competition isn't as heavy. The legal field may be the most complex and the, the most competitive field on the internet today. So it does involve a major investment and you're putting in thousands and thousands of dollars into this, especially if you're dealing with paid ads, if you're dealing with you know, really significant content development and SEO. And the problem is if you don't do it right, what do you have to show for it? <clears throat> like I said before, you can be number one on Google. You can have your ads running in front of everybody in, in the county that you practice in. You can have 5,000 people a month come to your website. But if you don't retain the clients, or more specifically, if they don't retain you as counsel, then what good is it? What are you worth? So <clears throat> that's why we have to have a clear plan. We want to make sure that you know where you're going, what has worked in 2021, and how we're going to take that and apply it to what's going to work in 2022. So let's talk about the opportunity that's, that's sitting right there before you today. We want to create this clear plan. We want to have very specific goals. And most importantly, we want to identify what the KPIs are that your legal practice needs to hit in order to move forward. We're going to want to know what, you know, how many leads do we need to generate in order to hit that revenue goal? And before we can do that, what is the revenue goal? How much do you, you know, what is the nut that you need to crack every month to make sure that you keep the lights on, to make sure that the paralegal is paid for, to make sure that you're taking the salary that you need as an attorney, to make sure that you have access to all of the tools that you need to make sure that you can market appropriately to generate those leads. You know, so it's just a big cycle that comes back to how many leads do we need and how many leads do we need to generate as well as how many leads do I need to get in order to close a deal? Am I closing eight out of 10 people that call me? Am I closing 50%? It's, it's a big piece. So obviously to have a great return on the investment, you have to have the plan. You've got to have the budget, yes. And you, know, you need to see what, it, you know, what do I need to do to set that ROI up? So in order to maximize the lead flow and to hit the sales goals for 2022, we have to plan. And I don't mean to, to really harp on this so much, but it's really clear that if you don't set clear goals, you know, you're just not, you're not going to, you're not going to move forward. You know, and what I like to always tell my clients is, you know, if we, if we fail to plan, then we're, you know, then we're just not going, we're not going to know if we're hitting our goals. I mean, we may be, we maybe think we're doing great. We may be driving in 15, 20 calls a month. And at the end of the day, that's not even half of what we need. We may be driving in so much that, you know, we now have to bring on more staff and with the current shortage um, in the workforce, we may not be able to handle that. So that's why it's so important to know all of our, you know, we, we have to know all of our numbers. Now, I don't know how many of you um, have seen this, but in 1979, Harvard University did a, did a study about planning and business development. And what they found was that 84% um, of people didn't have specific goals. The 13% um, had goals, but they didn't write them down. And then 3% had clear written goals and plans to accomplish them. Now, of those folks, which do you think were the ones that were most successful? Well, the 13% of the class who had goals were earning on average twice as much as the 84% who had no goals at all. Now, even more staggering is that the percent of those who had clear written goals, those who actually put it down, pen and paper, and, and you know, in 2022 speak, you know, who put it in into their into their PC or on, on their phone, um, they averaged 
10 times more than the other 97%. So again, that's what's why we think it is so important to have a plan to move forward. <clears throat> so we need to have written goals and plans. You know, we need to set a minimum of what it is that we're going to we're going to be spending and what a minimum of what it is that we need to bring in. Um, and we want to have at a minimum a one year goal. We want to have quarterly goals. We want to have monthly goals. And you really need to have a stopping point at each of those levels to look at the KPIs and to determine, am I doing this right? Is there something that I'm missing out on? Am I hitting my goals? Am I blowing my goals away? Maybe my goals weren't even accurate. And do we have to kind of reframe those? And do we have to reorganize? Um, you know, similar to you know, those of you who are in bankruptcy law, you know, are, are we doing a chapter 13 on ourselves, right? Are we reorganizing instead of reorganizing our finances? Are we reorganizing our marketing plan and our goals? So what are the goals for 2022? And when we said it's going to be a working session, this is what we're talking about. Think about this. What is the revenue target that you need to hit? How much is that monthly? I mean, you know, and now because when, when we're looking at attorneys, there are different levels of when income comes in. A lot of it is feast or famine. We have personal injury attorneys. We have a lot of folks who work on contingency and they may end up working three years before you get a payoff on a case. Um, so, you know, are we taking in enough of the smaller cases that we know are going to churn quickly? Do we have enough in the pipeline? And more importantly, how many calls do we need to, to ensure that we are able to close those retainers? And then finally, what is the average transaction value? And this is a big one. And, and it's going to differ, obviously, for the type of law you're in and the, excuse me, and the volume that you need. So, for example, in, in my practice, um, I've been a bankruptcy attorney for many, for, for many, many years. Um, and in the bankruptcy practice, it's about volume. We're going to charge anywhere from $1,500 to $3,500 for a simple Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Um, now we might get into litigation and we might get into adversary proceedings. And now we're looking at $20,000 retainers and hourly rates. Um, we may be, you know, you might be in the criminal law field where it's all hourly rate, and, you know, and, and the transaction value is going to be, you know, based on the type of case you take on. You might be in the personal injury space or, or even the med mal space where the, you know, where the transaction value could be enormous, but you don't, you're not going to have nearly as many. And then also, you know, the, it, it's not so much the transaction value in and of itself, but it's the profit after you pay for the discovery, the, the, after you pay for the expert witnesses and all of that. <clears throat> so what are your goals? So let, let, let's look at kind of a, a small personal injury firm as an example. So we, we have a client who is a smaller injury firm um, and their target revenue is $1.5 million in 2022. So how much is that a month? That, that's the easiest way to break this down. It's $125,000. So they need to be bringing in $125,000 every single month in order to hit that $1.5 million threshold. So we also know that their average transaction value is $5,000. Uh, these guys, they do a lot of smaller uh, car accidents. They do a lot of dog bite cases, a lot of smaller stuff. They're not into the, into the big premises liability. They're not into um, med mal or, or nursing home negligence or anything like that. Um, so they're, they're kind of in that volume business, very similar to when I was practicing in bankruptcy law. <clears throat> so how many calls does that require? Well, at $5,000 a transaction, you need to get at least 25 calls. And that's presuming you close every single person that calls in. So how many leads are you going to need? Uh, you know, so let's think about this. You know, what's your average conversion rate from caller to, um, you know, a booked call to, to a retained client even, um, you know, and then what you want to do is you want to divide those calls by the conversion rate. So, if you're closing you know, only 50% in our prior example, um, you know, we're going to need to have uh, at least 50 phone calls, 50 leads of some sort. And, and, and they don't, and I say phone calls, they don't have to be phone calls. They, they could certainly be forms filled out on the web. They could be um, lead forms on social media. It could be messaging campaigns and whatnot, but you need to have at least 50 people contacting you if you close 50%. So obviously your close rate is going to greatly impact how many calls you need, but 50, 50 people a month, 50 leads a month. That's not a small fee. And that's not something that you're going to probably get simply by just running Facebook ads for 15 bucks a day. Um, it's not something that you're going to get just by sending off 
uh, emails or just having a billboard, right? So you need to you need to really think about the omnipresent approach and what you need to do to generate that many leads and that many qualified leads. <clears throat> so let me just ask you this at this point. What are your goals for 2022? How many leads are you going to need to get there? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a minute. I'm going to let you calculate that. I'm going to let you try and figure that out at this point is kind of where you need to go. So let's talk about the fundamentals. How are we going to get those calls? It all starts with the message. What is it that we're telling people? How is it that we're presenting ourselves? How, are, how is our target market perceiving us? Now, the second part of that is, and, and maybe even the first part of that should have been, who is the target market? If you could have a perfect avatar of your client, what would that be? And it's going to be different for, for everybody. You know, for, you know, for, again, for somebody who was in my position as a bankruptcy counsel, uh, my, my target market was, you know, somebody who had money at one point, who had a home, who maybe lost a job, had some sort of a divorce, an illness, something that's caused them to not be able to pay their bills, might have fallen behind on their mortgage, um, but they have the ability to catch up over three to five years. Uh, you know, it generally was somebody who was still working and we, you know, we didn't target people who were at, in the retirement stage. You know, for you, it really depends. And you got to think about what is your target market and then where do they hang out? Where are you going to find them and where are they going to find you? And that's the media. How are we going to present that message to the target market? Are, you know, is it an older demographic that might be on Facebook? Is it, is it a, you know, a, a very young and, you know, rising demographic, you know, maybe millennials who are going to be on, you know, TikTok and on YouTube or Instagram, um, you know, is it, is it an audience who is actively searching for your specific needs and you want to make sure that you are on the local three pack in the maps when someone types in personal injury lawyer near me, auto accident, near me. what do I do? For, you know, what do I do if I just got into a car accident? People typing long tail questions into Google. You need to think about how can I leverage Google ads, local extensions, call extensions, all, all sorts of, the, of local service ads and things to that extent. All right. So now what we want need to do is we want to update the marketing message that you're currently using. Um, all right. So again, who is that ideal client? Um, what is, you know, what is, what does that avatar look like? And let, you know, look at your practice. Can you identify that target? Um, if you can, you know, how do we get to that target? How are they going to find out about you? And does the messaging that you're putting out there now on your website, does the messaging that you're putting out in social media and on your Google My Business profile, those are the three big ones, do they all convey, do they all speak to that avatar? Again, it's how are we reaching them? We've established who they are. We know what the message is. We got to reach them. So let's craft that message. Um, so what what are some of the things you know that people take into account you know when they're looking to hire an attorney in your practice area, whether that be you know a wills and trust estate attorney, whether that's a criminal attorney. You know sometimes the criminal attorney. What do they people take into account? I need the first person that's going to call me, and I don't care. You know it. With personal injury, you know, it might be I want someone who I know has done this type of work before and they have a history. Um, you know, in, in bankruptcy, it's, you know, honestly, depending on the situation. I mean, if you have a foreclosure tomorrow, again, it's first person, you know, first in time, first and right type of deal. It could be, though, you know, you're, you're in a very complex situation. You need to protect the assets. They're looking to, to they're looking to hear that you have the expertise. So it really depends. And, you know, why would someone choose your business over the com competition? That's the big piece. You know, so you, you really need to answer that question. And then, you know, what benefits do you offer your, your client um, that's going to resonate with them? You know, in, in every different niche, there are things that people want to hear. <clears throat> you know, in, in the home services industry, for example, let's say you're doing like kitchen remodeling, you know, maybe it's, you're going to get, you know, $1,500 off of your remodel. If you, you know, if you are in the, um, you know, medical practice, you know, may, maybe it's initial consultation free of charge. Um, you know, in the legal industry, you know, 
you know, it, you know, oftentimes it's going to be case studies, frankly, people, they, the legal profession, people want competency over all else. They, they know we're going to be expensive. They know we're going to be $300 an hour or more. Um, so they're ready. They're ready for, for the price point. What they're generally, you know, what they want to know though, is I'm spending a lot of money with you. Are you going to get me the results? So let's take a minute and just kind of think about the top three, you know, top three things that you do versus your competition and top three things that your ideal client wants to hear from you. And then think about, is that actually in your current messaging? <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the messaging that actually works. So um, are you immediately available to take a call and discuss the next steps? And is that something that is important in your, in your legal practice? So for example, now we, as we talked about before, um, if you're a criminal lawyer and someone was just arrested, they're looking for 24 seven. If you're in estate planning, this, not, this is not so important. Um, now, obviously your response time is critical. Um, we're gonna talk about that in, in a little bit. So this, this is, you know, we're not talking about, do you get back to people in 15 minutes, in a day, in three days? We're talking about, do they need to know that you're gonna respond to them no matter what time of the days or somebody's gonna respond to them? Um, how about sharing past client results? Now, obviously in the legal field, there's a lot that we can't do. There's a lot of ethical guidelines that our state bar associations put on us. Um, you know, and there's all kinds of attorney client privilege that we're not gonna, we can't disclose. Can our clients disclose it? It's up to them. Um, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that you ask them to, to breach privilege in any way, but if they are willing to put something, you know, to put a video together or to give you a Google review or a Facebook review just about your services in general, fantastic. I mean, AVO is, is a great field, uh, is, is a great place for that. Unfortunately, AVO and Yelp are kind of the places where 19 out of 20 people who are there are there because they're pissed off and they don't like something. They don't like the results. So, you know, that, and that, that's the other piece that you have to weigh. It's, you know, especially in this industry, it's reputation is everything. Um, you know, and are you putting forward those trustworthy and experienced type of messages? And that, got, again, goes back, I think, to the reviews more than anything else. Um, anything that's in the press about you, are you talking, you know, if you are in litigation, are you talking about cases? Maybe you have a case that went up to the, you know, to the appellate level in, in your state and you, you know, you have the seminal case on it now, or at least the most recent case on it, um, things like that. So now let's take a look at the media. All right. So there are so many different ways that you can reach out to people, you know, whether it be your website, whether it be social media, whether it be through at different ad platforms, but everything really starts and stops with branding and with your website. So is your website set up to convert people? So a couple of things. Number one, do you have ch a chat on your website? If you don't, you've got to get that. It's so important. And it does. And, and do you have the AI built out so it can actually answer some questions? And most importantly, the, the idea behind a chat is not to give legal advice. The idea is not to even gather that much information. The idea is to get just enough information and be able to have enough intelligent answers so that you can schedule somebody. One of the things that our that our company, our agency does is we always is we actually staff we have a we we have an office where we are staffed 24-7 and we have we allow our clients to have access to that so that we have someone who can actually monitor the text, the Google My Business messages, the Facebook Messenger messages that come in at all hours. And they, you know, and it's no different than an answering service. Um, and that's something that, you know, what you know, whether you use us or you use anybody, you do it on your own, you want to make sure that you have that. Um, you want to make sure that you have real pictures of yourself. Um, you know, the, the, there's a host of, of things that you want to make sure that you have. You want to make sure that your phone number is very prominent, that your menu is sticky. You want to make sure that the your H1 through H3 text is talking about things that actually matter and it's not just design. Um, you certainly want to make sure that, you know, that, that you're conveying the message that we've already crafted and that's in the homepage, that's on the About Us page. Um, I think one of the biggest pieces right now is, do you have video? Video is so critical. So let's pull up, pull up your website right now 
and you know, just take a look at it for a second and say, you know what, is this website really going to convert? If I wasn't the lawyer, if I was the client, do I see what I need to see in this website to make me think that, that this law firm or this attorney is going to be able to not only handle my, my issue, is going to take care of me the way I need to be taken care of, is going to communicate with me the way that I need to be communicated for my own sanity and get the results. Now, the, the one last piece about it is, are you conveying the right kind of level of of income and, and pricing and all of that. And that's something that's really important. You know, if you just, you know, depending on the type of law you're in um, and who you're speaking to, you know, bankruptcy, for example, you don't need to convey that luxury feel. That's really not going to be your target audience. If, if I'm on a high-end estate planning, very different look and feel. So, you know, you want to think about those two. Is Am I just using a template that, that I bought for 99 bucks somewhere? Or, you know, was there a lot of thought put into the site? So what are the biggest marketing issues that law firms face? There is absolutely no doubt what it is. It's unconverted leads. Can we get leads as attorneys? It's really not that hard. If you put a little bit of strategy behind it, if you put some money behind it, you're going to get in front of people. The problem is that some of those folks you get in front of, remember, you're not the only one. There are, you know, many of many of us are in shared office spaces. There are four or five other firms in our building, let alone in the town, right? So we need to, to be in communication immediately. Here's the problem. Up to 80% of inbound traffic leads are left unconverted. Now, when I say I have a client who's doing, you know, who's closing 50% of the business, that's huge. And maybe you are closing 80%, 90% of the business that comes into you. But I think I would ask, how many calls are you really getting? Um, are you getting enough that if you started to get a large percent, would you still be closing at that level? And the reason that 80% of inbound traffic leads are left unconverted is because of lack of communication. So the leads, they're simply not followed up with. And the statistics show us this very clearly. If you do not touch a client or a prospective client within 15 minutes, and I don't care if that's three in the morning, I don't care if it's one in the afternoon, 15 minutes, some type of communication. It could be an automated email. It could be an automated text. It could be a, a Facebook message. It could be a phone call, whatever it is. Within 15 minutes, if you don't touch them, they're probably going to somebody else. Now, the average client needs to be followed up with between five and seven times before they even book or they retain you. Now, in the legal field, sometimes it's a little bit less because of the urgency. But if we're talking about, you know, a, a personal injury or we're talking about estate planning or something that's not, I'm going to lose my house tomorrow, I'm going to jail, um, I'm being, you know, I, I have an eviction issue, uh, there's an immigration issue. If you take away the urgent issues, five to seven touches. And again, that doesn't mean five to seven meetings. It doesn't mean five to seven phone calls, phone call text message, email, all the follow-up is so important, you know, and the other piece is how are you, and, and what are, where are those touch pieces? Today's consumer is, they're just programmed to go to their phone and not to go to their phone to pick it up and, hey, how are you doing? It's texting. It's text, it's social media messaging. That's where they want those touch points. And the statistic, by the way, show in terms of sending in text versus an email, you have an 80% chance, a better chance of having a, a, um, a text message read than an email. Think about that. All right, so here's the solution. Um, we, we try to leverage our clients' marketing into an automation type of system. So where within two minutes of someone clicking on a Google ad or calling, or filling out a form in some way within two minutes, they are going to be touched. They are going to have a text message and they're going to have a phone call or a voicemail drop. Um, we automate that so that every project is touched at least five times. And we're able to engage in two-way text messaging within the first day. And that's why I say it's so important to have that, to have that, uh, you know, answering type of answering service for text. And it's, again, it's not, you know, it's not just, you know, thank you for contacting us. When would you like to schedule an appointment? But it is a human being who can actually engage and can answer questions. And yes, if somebody asks me, I need to know, you know, 
if I file a bankruptcy and I am uh, 30 days past due on my mortgage statement, can they start a foreclosure process? I may know the answer. My people might even know that answer, but they're not going to give that. They're going to say, well, what, well, we need to schedule you with an attorney and they can discuss that. But it's so important that you at least have the communication. So make every lead you generate more valuable. That's really the key. And the way you do that is by communication. So let's take a minute and let's think about what are the three conversion elements that you want to implement in your website that is going to allow that communication and is going to give that feel to your prospective client. All right. So we've talked about the messaging. We've talked about the media that we're going to, where we're going to find our client. We've talked about who our clients are. Now let's talk a little bit about the thing that actually really matters because this is what's going to dictate your plan moving forward. This is going to dictate how you modify your plan. And that is the numbers, the math. What are the KPIs, the key performance indicators? So first question, you can't have KPIs if you're not tracking. You know, if you don't track, you don't know. So first of all, let's say we have a Google ads campaign, we have a Facebook ads campaign, we have a website, we have Google My Business Profile. That's four different places. Everybody calling this, everyone seeing the same number to call? They might be calling the same number, but are they, are they dialing the same number? Call tracking. You can have a different phone number for every campaign and have them all forward to the same phone system where your back end, your CRM is tracking it. What is the average cost per call generated? And this is really important. If I'm running a Google Ads campaign and that's the only thing I'm doing, yeah, I can probably tell a lot easier how much it costs me. What if I'm doing SEO? What if I'm also doing Facebook ads? What if I'm doing Facebook engagement, email, automation? You need to be able to aggregate that whole piece into not only what is my average cost per call generated in total, but what is my average cost per call or contact generated per campaign. And then also what I like to do is I, I like to look at what is the average transaction value from a lead from each of those campaigns, because now you really, you want to weight it, you know, and then, the, and the best thing to do is you want to have your CRM set up with some, with a simple dashboard so you can measure the KPIs. You want to have something that shows you new leads came in, where they came from, um, when they called, when they were followed up with, um, what, you know, how much money, how much spend went into getting that particular client. It's really important just to have the, those basics. So you can improve, or I should say, you, you can't improve what, what you can't measure. Um, and you can also improve what you can't measure. It really depends on how it is that you're looking at this. So again, first thing is set up simple KPI dashboard on your CRM. You know, whether you're using HubSpot, whether you're using Salesforce, whether you're using Go High Level or maybe some proprietary uh, system, you want to make sure whatever you're using has the ability to track those KPIs that are most important for your marketing and most important for your sales and revenue. Um, and you want to track both your leads and your conversions from different sources like we talked about. Where are these leads coming from? How much does it cost to get a lead from Facebook versus how much does it cost to get a lead from uh, organic Google versus um, email automation to lead nurturing uh, people? And you want to figure out then, you know, what is working best and obviously shift the budget there. Okay, so, so far we've talked about clear goals and why you need a target for 2022. We've talked about the clarity around your market, your message and your media, the, the three fundamentals. Um, we've made sure or we've looked at our websites or hopefully we've looked at our websites and we're, we're taking kind of a note of whether or not they are built to convert. Um, and we're, we're thinking about what are the KPIs that mean the most to us? And do we have the ability to track those KPIs um, and, and especially phone calls? Do we have the ability to track phone calls? And without asking, how did you find out about us? No, where did they find out about you? So let's talk a little bit about the key trends that we have seen towards the end of 2021, moving into 2022. Biggest one, 
Google local service ads. This is very different than Google ads. These actually are um, a shift from, or excuse me, these are actually a, um, in advertising that's placed above the normal Google ads, but you do need to be certified. You need to be verified. Um, and, the, and the cost for these can be significantly more, um, but you're only gonna pay for actual leads. You're not gonna pay for clicks. Um, another thing that we have seen, and we've talked about this, is the shift from phone conversations to message conversations. Chatbot, ult the ultimate tool on your website. Um, the fact that people want to be communicated via messenger and via social media, you know, Facebook messenger. And we wanna really make sure that we're omnipresent. Um, we are not going to dominate our market simply by doing SEO or simply by placing Google ads and ignoring everything else, or you know, simply using local service ads. We need to be omnipresent in 2022, which means we need to be everywhere. So let's first talk about what is a Google local service ad. So if you take a look um, at the screenshot here, you can see the, these three folks that are right up on the top. Um, they are Google screened. What that means is you can't just become, a, or just run a, a, um, a local service ad as a personal injury lawyer in your area, but you need to physically fill out some contact information, give your bar information, even your licensing information over to to, to confirm that you are actually licensed. You are, um, they, they're going to look at your reviews on Google My Business that you, you know, you don't have 85 one-star reviews, um, you know, and on the board, you know, on the fringe of being disbarred. Um, these are really critical, but because of that, A, it gives that added level of trust and B, if you look at the, um, the Google ads below it, those are the paid ads where you don't need to be verified by Google. So your ad is even higher placed than that. So once you click on, you know, you, you click through to somebody, you can see, you know, you, you have, you know, Andrew Pickett here, Andrew Pickett Law here. You can see that five stars. You, you can see all the GMB info that is pulled directly um, all the information about them. So it gives a little bit more of a profile and you can, there's an immediate CTA, a call to action, send a request. And that phone number, if you're on a cell phone, it's clickable. So how do these work? Um, like I guess the first thing is you got to complete a Google local service application. Um, it's going to ask you for information, not nothing really that that involved. It's going to ask you just what is your bar number? What bars are you licensed under? Uh, it's going to ask you what is your company name? What is your legal company name? They're going to verify that you're actually registered with the state if you claim you're a corporation or an LLC. Uh, it's going to want to verify your physical address. It's going to want to verify your name. Um, it's going to ask for a headshot. That's important. If you're not willing to put your face out there, find somebody else in the firm who's licensed who is. So Google runs this background check on you and your employees. Um, and they are going to ask you how many people are licensed in your firm. And they're going to check up on each of them just to make sure everybody's in good standing. So the, um, the business owners also need to, to complete a background check. And is it, you know, it's not a Corey, but it's, it's just kind of a basic business background check. Honestly, we have not had a situation where any of our clients have ever been denied for this. Um, it's really just more of a, oh, excuse my language, it's a pain in the ass, uh, but it is. Uh, but if you go through it, it, it puts you in a much better position. So once approved, and if active in your area, you're only going to pay for people who literally send a message to you or call you directly from the ad. If they just click to look, not going to pay for it. So because of that, um, some of the fees are, you know, a little bit higher. And I'll give you a perfect example. Um, so we have a bankruptcy law firm that we work with in the Greenbelt, Maryland area. I can tell you right now that a standard chapter seven lead costs them $98. But they know $98 is the cost of their lead. Now, if you're, if you're doing low cost chapter sevens at 500 bucks a pop, maybe it's not worth it unless you've got an insanely high close rate. But if you're doing a $1,500 chapter seven or a $3,000 chapter 13, and you're paying $98 a lead and you're closing one out of every two, it's a no brainer. 
Now, you're not going to get as many leads because you're going to be very limited in what people are looking for. Um, and you also can set a cap so you don't spend, you know, $150 a lead, $200 a lead 10 times a day. Um, now, obviously, the price is going to vary by city in the industry. And the, the numbers I just gave you are very specific to consumer bankruptcy in the Greenbelt, Maryland, and Prince George County area of Maryland, um, which is just so people who are not familiar with that. It's right on the Washington, D.C. Um, border. It's about an hour south of Baltimore. So you want to get feedback from active users. That, that's also really important. Um, you have a much lower cost per lead than PPC, but you're going to have a much higher cost per click um, in that it's not really a true click that you're paying for in, in local service ads. You're getting, you're paying for the lead where pay-per-click is you might get five clicks before someone actually you know, fills out a form. Um, so you're going to get a higher quality lead than any other sources, no doubt, because these are people who are very, very specifically looking for bankruptcy attorney near me, personal injury attorney near me type of, the, you know, it's not going to be the long tail terms. It's not going to be, you know, um, someone searching for Doverman pinch or dog bite specialist. It's just that that's, I mean, you could certainly bid on that under regular ads, but I would recommend you just try and optimize for local SEO because it's such a specific type of situation. Um, you are still going to get some, some tire kickers. You're going to get people who still are price shopping depending on the area. I mean, even PI cases, I've, I've had clients who told me, listen, I'm getting, I'm getting people who are asking if I'll do it for 20%. And that's up to you. Um, Typically, that's not what you're going to get. Um, now, in the hourly rate situation of the of the business attorneys and the and the criminal attorneys and immigration to some extent, and, and you know anyone who's doing that type of work, um, consulting work. At the end of the day, I mean, you you know as well as, as anybody, your rate's still going to come into play. Um, you're going to see a solid ROI. Most law firms who have been involved in local service ads have, to be perfectly frank, dropped their regular Google ads and are only running these along with their SEO campaigns. And then what they're doing is they're actually running retargeting ads in the Google display network and in on Facebook and Instagram um, to people who have already clicked, seen, and haven't scheduled with them to kind of nurture them through that. So what are the next steps uh, if you want to get involved in local service ads? Well, you're going to talk to your strategy partner, to your marketing manager. You can reach out to us. Um, you know, you can reach out to us at legalmarketingstrategy.com. I'll give you all my contact information at the end. Um, but the other thing you can do is you just go right to adwords.google.com slash local services slash sign up and start the application process at the very least. Um, there's nothing any agency can do for you until you get approved on, on this front. So obviously you complete all the background checks. They're going to ask you for license information and all that. Um, you want to put the tracking in place to gauge ROI once you do get involved. You want to figure out, and this is really important because a lot of, a lot of people who aren't really experts in, in the pay-per-click pay area don't differentiate between local service ads and regular Google ads that come in. If you're running them simultaneously, make sure you can gauge those campaigns separately. Um, and be sure that you're leveraging the platform to convert leads into clients, meaning that you have, the, you have those touch points already scheduled in. You've got the email and the text automation ready to go. You've got the lead nurture sequence. You've got someone who is, who is going to pick up the phone and call that person within a reasonable time period, ideally 15 minutes. And you want to play the game while the ROI, you know, only makes sense. That's, you know, that, that's, that's critical. If, you know, again, if you're spending $150 for a lead and, and you're charging $500 for a simple will, um, maybe it's not the best play for you. So, and, that, and that's, that's when you really want to talk to someone about forming the strategy and looking at your overall um, practice and, you know, your transaction values. So, 
you want to build the 2022 plan based on all the things that we have talked about. And I know there's a ton here. Um, you know, one of the things that we do is we, we have this chart that we follow, which really, you know, it's all the different areas that we look at. We look at SE, we're always an SEO first agency um, because that's sustainable. And you know that once, once you have got solid ranking, it's really hard to get knocked down unless you do something highly unethical or you just ignore it completely and let everybody else, you know, take all the steps ahead of you. Um, we'll look at pay per click, Google service ads, Google ads. Look at retargeting ads and retargeting with email and lead nurturing. Look at uh, different paid online directories like Avo and Find Law and Justica and, and whatnot. Reach out with, you know, to existing clients who they might have a new legal issue or they might know somebody else. Um, we look at the paper lead, like the local service ads, look at media and social media um, and press releases. We're looking at programs that we may even offer. Now, gift cards really nah, kind of depends on what kind of practice you're in, but newsletters, rewards programs for referrals, things like that. Got to be careful. Obviously, you can't do fee splitting. We know that. Um, but there are things that you can do within the ethical guidelines, and every state is different, of course. So certainly check with your local bar before you initiate any kind of referral program. So we've talked about a lot today. Um, we've talked about different types of ways to reach your clients. We've talked about um, who the client really is, what the messaging should be. We've talked about making sure the website is built to convert. We've talked about why you actually even need to plan. A lot of people haven't even, they just wing it, they don't plan. Um, what are the top three internet marketing initiatives that we've talked about today that you want to, in, that you want to instill at the end of 2021 going into 2022? I'm going to give you a minute just to think about that. And I just want to show you a quick case study of when you do this right, what can happen. So here is the law firm that I spoke about in the Greenbelt, Maryland area. Um, they've done the, the proper SEO optimization. Um, and because of that, they know that their people are not, they're, they're looking for you know somebody who's gonna pop up on the map. A lot of people are just looking for debt relief attorney and chapter 13 attorney, chapter seven attorney. Number one on the Google maps in the, you know, right in the area, that's the goal. That's what making sure that you follow all the best practices will get you. And when you do that, you're gonna increase your calls, you're gonna increase your leads, thereby you're going to increase your revenue. So again, what have we covered today? Um, we've set some goals for 2022. We know how many leads um, you need to hit your target. We have dealt with the three fundamentals of marketing success, the messaging, the media, and the, and the, um, the actual avatar. We have talked about how to optimize your websites in 2022 and beyond. And again, if you want more, and we're going to really take a deep, deep dive into this in January in our webinar. Um, we talked about the big picture of all the online marketing channels that you should be tapping into, whether it's local service ads, regular Google ads, Facebook engagement, um, GMB, and the list goes on and on. We've talked about some of the latest trends that you need to be aware of. Biggest trend, I think, is the, is the conversion from phone calls to messaging. Um, people want to communicate that way. Um, we have developed a custom action plan to, to the extent that you were actually following through with my questions and, and thinking, with, thinking to yourself and jotting it down where you are now and where you need to go. So I hope this information was very helpful to you. Um, if you are like most attorneys I know, you know, you are much more about the practice of law than the marketing and the sales end of it. Um, and if that is you and you're just looking and you're looking to get a free analysis of your digital marketing, if you're looking just to, to talk to someone to find out, you know, are there any opportunities, you know, what would it cost to, to move forward? Give us a call. You know, we love to talk to people. If we can work with you, fantastic. You know, if it works out, if we can't, we love just speaking to, you know, to people in the industry, especially in the legal field, because there's so many different areas. Um, you know, even, even myself as a, as a licensed attorney, uh, I still, you know, I still know what's going on in the bankruptcy world, but I mean, I, you know, 
the only way I keep up is by talking to people in the other industries. So, you know, give us a call. Um, check us out online, legalmarketingstrategy.com. You can email me at mike at legalmarketingstrategypros.com. Um, or you can give us a call 